I recently gave a presentation to a group of students. Uh, these were sophomore juniors and seniors, and they were volunteer students that came together. There was about 50 of them. They came together in that they were going to serve as mentors for the incoming freshman students. So this was a, a select group of students, but I, I really wanted to, to share with you my experience with them in that it kind of gives a good insight into the psyche of students currently in the university. So my presentation dealt with helping them understand what the policy was at the university dealing with using AI, as well as how to use the AI effectively and without violating academic integrity. So I went through and I covered the, the different policy here at my university. Uh, they were appreciative of that because they hadn't heard it before. And it makes sense. It's a relatively new policy, right? But they, they really liked that someone took the time to go over the specific policy. So this is what I've been recommending that all faculty should, should do this on the first day of school. They should go over this because some students haven't heard this before. Now, of course, our freshmen haven't heard it. So that's why we're, we're going through this process. But there's other students that may not have already heard it because they were you know, sophomore juniors or seniors when the policy came out. So it's important to go over that with them. So they, they really like that. And then the other big part is that I went over how they could use AI on their own to use it to help with their learning, to empower their, their overall learning, but without violating academic integrity. So different techniques where they could use it to help them study, to help explain the information, all sorts of different practicing for tests and exams, all sorts of different ways that it could be used on their own. They were very appreciative of that because they hadn't heard some of the techniques. Uh, I gave them some example prompts that they could use. So they really liked that as well. Now, at the end, I gave a time and opportunity for them to ask questions. And what was really sort of telling is that all the questions were very much focused on this aspect of them writing and then being checked dealing with AI text detection. That was a number one topic. One of their greatest concerns, and one student asked me, they said, do instructors know that AI text detection software is not very effective? He gave an example that he, he did some writing and then he personally took it and put it through several different AI text detectors, uh, chat GPT zero, a couple of different ones. And he said that it all came back positive, meaning that AI uh, wrote it, right? It was detecting that AI wrote it, but he said that wasn't the case because he had personally wrote it. He was just checking it before he turned it in. So he was very concerned. Right? And of course he, he brought the results and when he turned it in, he showed it to the instructor, but he was very worried that this was happening and that maybe lots of different instructors were thinking that they could just use these types of softwares and it, but it doesn't work very well. So I, I told him, I said, yes, I, I, I do know that. And I've been expressing that to faculty as much as I can that, hey, it's not very effective. Turn it in is a little bit more effective, but still not a hundred percent. And of course the big thing is that it's, it gives a lot of false positives, especially to students that have English as a secondary or an additional language. And at the university I, I work at, that, that's a majority of them. So that's a key thing that they were concerned about. And several of them raised this concern. So that was addressed that way as far as helping them to see that that's what I was also pushing out uh, as a director of the Center for Teaching and Learning. So hopefully the faculty are, are fully understanding that. And that's something that I think all of us need to be pushing as well, that those AI text detecting software is not 100% for sure. So that really isn't strong evidence in any way. Now, that might be an, an indicator that an instructor can use, but of course they need more indicators. They need to know their students. They need to have prior work example. They need to be able to compare that to the, the results as far as what do they get when they run the prompt through an AI? Do they get a similar type of response as far as an essay? all these additional factors. And of course, ultimately you need to sit down and talk to the student to understand why the results seem this way. So in addressing that, uh, that, that helped them to sort of appease the, their worry a little bit. And then a follow-on question was again, related to the same topic in that uh, this student asked, what can I do because I'm concerned that instructors are going to think more and more that my essay, my writing, is written by an AI. I want to protect myself to avoid this situation. 
So they asked, well, what can the student do on them on their own to protect themselves from ensuring that the instructor doesn't think that AI wrote it? And unfortunately, there isn't too much that they can do, right? Because if, if an instructor suspects, then they're going to go through a process. What I told them is there's a couple of different things that could be done. One, of course, is that they could do a screen capture. They could do a screen recording of their process and writing things out. That's a little cumbersome. Uh, it's not uh, very easy to go through, but it would be a technique where you would be recording your, your process of writing things out, going through, you know, step by step, the, the, the whole writing process. So then now that could serve as evidence in protecting yourself. So that's one technique. The other technique that I recommended is I said that you should use track changes. So use track changes within your overall writing. So within Microsoft Word or even within uh, Google Docs, they, there's, a, there's a history uh, technique that you could use where it's basically tracking your changes, having multiple versions of it, creating a rough draft, even if the instructor, the professor, teacher doesn't require a rough draft, but the fact that you have that rough draft now also serves as another version. So versioning, track changes, that would be a great way for the student to then ensure that they have some evidence of their overall process in writing. So that would be the, the technique that I, that I mainly recommended. So it was very interesting sort of to, to get in there and to, to see that. Uh, so th those are some things that I would recommend for, for, again, for all faculty to talk to their students, to address those concerns with them, to make sure you go over policy, the university policy, as well as your own policy within the classroom, as far as what you're doing with AI, what they can expect, what you're expecting from them. And then also to tell them some of the things. I mean, I always recommend that that would be one of the things that you do as an instructor is require a rough draft, require track changes so that you can see if you have any concern about their writing, as well as to go over some things to, again, help train them in using AI properly. So uh, one of the infographics that I previously released dealt with how can students use AI on their own, again, to empower themselves, but again, without violating academic integrity. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Another infographic, this is a great infographic, to help them see and learn about different ways. Because again, we want students to use AI properly, effectively, with academic integrity, but if we don't train them properly, how are they supposed to know? So again, it falls upon us. And that's what we're doing, right? We're developing this AI literacy within our students. So we need to continue to do that, continue to develop it within ourselves. And that's what we're doing by watching uh, videos like this, reading books, dealing with this. By developing that within ourselves, now we can help to develop that within our students. So again, together as a community of inquiry, community of learning, we can definitely help to address that. Uh, if you've liked any of the information I provided with any of these videos, please subscribe, like, and share so that we can all address this issue together. And remember, learning is for life. Mm -hmm.